All right. So just a little bit back review from Monday. Come on. So right now we have, with the ship's AC power that we have coming in, it's going through a rectifier, going through a voltage regulator, and we're getting about 27 volts DC, all right? During normal operation, it's charging the four bank of batteries that we have here. And if we close any of the switches that we have here, it sends the signal to the general alarm. But if we lose ship's main power, Instead of normal operation of charging the batteries and then going this direction, we are having all the power coming out of the batteries and signaling the ship's general alarm. <coughs> so we have two 24 volt DC systems on the Empire State. We have a battery charger for Basically, two different battery charges going to two different systems, all right? We have our general alarm circuit and we have our internal communications. Like I said, that's navigation instruments and anything else that the bridge needs to mainly operate. So we have a 24 volt battery bank on each end. Just like the ship's general alarm, we have normal operation where the batteries are being charged and also the electrical service is going into the general alarm circuits and the internal communication circuits. All right. But if we ever have any sort of power failure that the ship's power goes out, or if we lose the plant, anything like that, all of our emergency power is going to be coming directly off these batteries until the emergency generator kicks on. All right. So that is the end of DC current. And we're going to be going into AC current now. So with AC current, it's called alternating current, all right? This is what you would have in your home. This is what pretty much is getting transmitted through all of the power lines in the United States. And as we'll talk about, different countries have different uh, standards for what we're going to be. Different countries have different standards. Some, okay, that's good. So some countries will be using uh, maybe 50 hertz where we use 60 hertz and they use 110 uh, volts where we use 120. It all depends, but for what we're going to be dealing with is going to be U.S. standard. All right. So AC voltage reverses polarity according to this pattern. So it's basically going to be flipping back and forth and it's going to create almost of a sine wave. So when it's going, it's actually kind of flickering light bulbs almost. Very quickly, you won't be actually, the human eye won't be able to see it. So a couple of different uh, definitions. I'm sure you guys have seen this with your physics classes in high school, but we'll talk about it because it's still needed for what we're gonna need. So we have peak value is the magnitude. So that is the distance from here to the top of the wave or effective value. It's the RMS value, which is what we're gonna be talking about a lot going through with this. It's not just about the magnitude. All right, the nominal voltage and current are effective value, uh, values. 120 volt light bulb, 15 amp fuses. So we have our peak and then we have our effective. And let's talk about frequency. So frequency is the period 
is the time in seconds between peaks. Frequency is the number of cycles completed in one second. Thus, the frequency is equal to one over T in basically hertz. So in the US, the standard frequency is 60 hertz. All right, if you go over to Europe, like in London, they use the, basically they're at 50 hertz. All right, and this is why a lot of reasons why um, certain electronics where you have to be, it's locked to the nation or it's locked in a very specific geographical area because otherwise equipment that is made to work on 50 hertz, come on. Equipment that's made to work on 50 hertz will either break when it's getting 60 hertz is getting sent through it or vice versa. All right, it won't explode right away, but it's just long-term damage will happen to it. So computers, uh, anything that takes a, some sort of electric charge, uh, especially since, <clears throat> as we learn about throughout this class today, a lot of systems won't be working just on 120 volt, 60 hertz systems. They will be working off of some sort of a 12 volt and uh, a lot of transformers will be utilizing these numbers to create a very nice 12 volt system, all right? And if you have, if you change these numbers, then your output is gonna be changed and the longevity of your electronics can break. So with phase, so it describes the starting point of the solenoids, a voltage or a current with a zero phase angle starts at the peak value. So right here, that is a zero phase angle, all right? A voltage with a positive phase angle starts after the peak. So if you have another peak that comes in, here we'll have a positive phase angle. And over here, this would be a negative. And a voltage with a negative phase angle starts before the peak at a negative 90 degree phase angle is a sine wave. So just normal systems, all right? This is like very, very basic. If you look and you're replacing old um, outlets that only have two probes where they look like this, <clears throat> So this is a single phase two wire AC. So if this is your outlet and you're in an older home and this is what you're actually looking at in the wall and there's no circle right there, all right? That is the, that is a single phase two wire system. All right, we'll talk about why this is dangerous in a second, but just keep in mind, one of these is the neutral, one of them is live. All right, so we have our ground, which is our neutral wire, all right? Neutral remains at ground potential, so zero volts. Here's our effective value is at 120. And notice how our sine wave is also goes above what our 120 volts effective value is. All right, live terminal A, so this is what's representing live terminal A, rises above and falls below the ground potential. All right, remember, this is always constantly flipping. So, We have single phase three wire AC. And this is with two live wires instead of one singular live wire. So we still have our ground.
but now we have live terminal B falls below and rises above the ground potential and live terminal A rises above and falls below the ground potential. All right, the neutral remains at the ground potential. So this is what's creating, as we talk about with voltage, is our potential difference. So with our 120 effective value that goes in both directions, for the full effective value, that's where we're gonna get 240 volts. So this is a three phase, four wire alternating current. We have live wire A, then we have live wire B, and we have live wire C. Each one of these are 120 degrees out of phase from each other. All right, so from the neutral to A, and from the neutral to B, and from the neutral to C, each one of them are 120 degrees apart. So the way we look at it is we have our phase voltages down here, all right, and those are from the grounds to the live wires, and then we have our actual line voltages. So from A to C, from A to B, and then from C to B. So again, we still have our neutral and we still have our three live wires, A, B, and C, all right? So to look at our line voltage that we have is basically what we're looking at is we have, whoa, didn't mean to do that. We have 120 volts for Maritime College. We have an industry facilities and we have Con Ed. All right, so 120 volts times the radical three is 208 volts, all right? And those are gonna be between A to C, A to B. All right, and a way better look at that is our domestic distribution. So this is what you would actually see when you're actually looking up at telephone poles. All right, still four wire, it's three phase, it's coming in at 2160, and then we have our transformers. So, one thing I also wanna talk about is this symbol here. All right, that's a new symbol as we were talking about and add to, just like we said, we had our batteries, That's our battery, and like we said, we had our switches. This is an actual ground symbol. So whenever you see this symbol, it means it's the ground for the system, or it goes to ground. So our pink is green, uh, sorry, our pink is ground. Then we have live wires of blue, green, and yellow. We're gonna be taking the yellow and also our purple. So our yellow is alive, our purple is the ground. So yellow comes into our transformer with induction on the other side, we get 120 volts coming out. 
our center of it is ground and it's still grounded to the same line. All right, so ground is continuously connected. So this isn't coming into one wire. This is an actual spot where it's coming into a conduit. All right, so it's just casing that's holding all the three wires that are inside of it. All right, so basically you'd end up in a spot where four or five houses are connected to one transformer. All right, this isn't gonna be just one transformer going to one house. And that's why you see those big boxes or those either a box or a cylinder that's up on the poles. Those are the transformers. All right, so looking in on the panel itself, we come in through the meter, there's our kilowatt hours meter, and we have three wires coming in. All right, we still have our neutral, and then we have two live wires, and this is what our electric panel looks like. This is our breaker box. All right, these right here, these symbols, represent circuit breakers, all right? They don't necessarily have to have a box like that. A lot of the times what you'll see is two straight lines with just a half moon going over it. And all that represents is just a breaker, all right? So this is our main circuit breaker, and then we have branches. So a branch takes care of different zones in the house. All right, so if you have your, basically your lighting and your circuitry for all of your outlets in your dining room. All right, and you go to your living room, same idea, all of your lighting and your circuitry for that. Each one of them is gonna be connected via a live wire and also to the neutral. All right, so that's why we talk about if you ever open up a outlet, but there's three wires in it. We'll get into that in a second and explain where these neutrals go. But each one of the rooms that it goes to has its own breaker. Now, the big thing that you're not seeing here yet is anything if you have a dryer that's an electric dryer, who knows what an electric dryer is running at, what voltage does like an electric wire go, uh, electric dryer? Is it 240? 240, 440, right? It's not 440, it is 240. Oh. All right. So how do we get 240 volts. All we're coming into the house is two 120 volt lines. You combine a neutral. Do we have a separate line that's 240 getting service from outside? No, you just combine the two lines. We combine the two lines, exactly. All right, so we take one from each and we're getting two lines coming in. They have two breakers instead of one. And now we have 240 volts going into our appliances. Now let's talk about the third eye an electric box. All right. So, residential and commercial systems are grounded. So if a live wire comes in contact with the ground, a large amount of the current may return to the neutral through the ground. All right, so what you're using is more or less the earth as a, the potential difference. It's gonna send the electric current back through the earth to the ground. All right, 
So if it comes in contact with any ground, basically it'll keep going until the circuit breaker will trip. And once it trips, it opens up this circuit breaker. So now you don't have contact. This is what it looked like when we were talking about just normal two wire system without the third eye. But this is what the cause with the problems. And this is why I was saying any ground. If you have an electric fault on this toaster, all right, where this wire has a nice casing around it with an actual wire on the inside, If it's old and it starts to fray right at this contact point to the metal toaster, you will have electric current that will come out and escape since it's no longer insulated. It's going to find the ground and it's going to go through you to find it. All right. And that's how people got electrocuted just via toasters having some sort of fault in their wiring. So the electricity would go through any port of the rubber that is weak, anything else like that. As soon as you touch the toaster, because you think about it, the tabletop might be made of wood. It might be made of a stone, something that's not a very good conductor. Even the feet might be rubber, but as soon as you pick up that metal toaster, you are a very good conductor and it will travel nice and neatly through the shortest distance through your body and back and find that ground. And this is what was so dangerous about these two wire systems and why at any point that you can, you should be able, you should and want to upgrade any of your electrical equipment to get away from that. So, and by the time that this would break, you'd have a couple of good shocks already through you. Nice 240 going through your body. I'm sorry, 120, but going through your body. <clears throat> so they added this ground, all right? So this is a three wire system, all right? The ground is attached to the ground coming from the telephone pole. Remember these, this purple wire right here still goes up to the telephone pole, all right? So you have a direct line as a backup. This green line right there is the backup to already this white neutral. It's not carrying electricity back like the white but it's directly connected to the equipment. So now if you have a short, same thing, if you have a short in the wire, if it frays and you have an electric current going through and it's escaping, it's now gonna go through this green backup wire. All right, because it's connected to the equipment. It's not part of the circuit, it's connected to the equipment and it will go back and back feed it. You could touch this and you'd be fine. It would probably be hot because of the electricity that's traveling through it will heat up the metal, but you won't be electrocuted. You'd just be sitting there wondering why your toaster doesn't work. So this is still considered a two wire system because the green is not carrying any electricity, whereas the white is carrying electricity, but it's not the live wire. So what you're saying is that like, if you're searching for appliances to buy, it's better to have that ground. Now you pretty much it's standard to have that ground. You're not going to find a, unless you're like bargain shopping at a, at a garage sale, you're not going to find a toaster that's made without a three wire system. It's pretty much electric code now. Okay. Same thing is, is that 
any sort of outlet that you install has to have, um, has to be three wire, has to be upgraded to it. Um, like I said, it's very difficult to find anything that would be a two wire. All right. Any questions on anything we've gone over so far? Okay. 10.53. There we go. So back to this nice little diagram. So let's get our heads out of residential and let's go to shipboard. So the TSES has five, a 450 volt, three phase, three wire, ungrounded. All right. And that's key to every single ship you go out on. There is no ground. All right. So you don't have a ground wire right here. It's not connected to the earth because otherwise ships wouldn't really get too far in this world. So looking at transformers, the last thing we saw with a regular transformer out on the street was one wire coming off and another wire going right to ground. All right, this is residential. All right, remember if you draw messy enough, no one can tell that you misspelled something. So, we have two wires coming off and all three of these, A, B, and C, are all live. So if we look at this, we have 450 volts coming in to our transformer using inductance and stuff that we're gonna learn in our electricity courses, we create 120 volts coming out. And the big thing that we should pay attention to here is this one is A and B. This one right here is B to C. And then this one right here is A to C. We do not have A going to B and then A going to B again. All right, each one of them is three different wiring configurations. So now we have our 120 volt lighting circuit. with a nice breaker. So this is a three pole circuit breaker. Like we said, this symbol right here. A lot of times you'll see it without that nice little neat box there. It's fine, that's still a circuit breaker. That's a three pole circuit breaker. You can tell because they're all in the combination. They're usually boxed out and together like that. So continuing on with an ungrounded system, you will still have circuit breaker panels. All right, and what you'll see coming off is still the same circuit breakers that you'll see in your house, but it's just the main difference of what you're seeing is, is all three of these wires are live. So you have your state rooms for port inboard forward and your state rooms for starboard inboard forward. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we have our passageway port forward and our passageway starboard forward. And the key takeaway we should be looking here is how we're connecting. 
All right. Our staterooms port inboard and starboard inboard forward, both are taking off power off of our AB line. All right, but then our passageway port forward and passageway starboard forward are coming off of our BC line, both of them, even though we're going to two different circuit breakers. All right, and it continues in that fashion. So these are two pole circuit breakers opposed to the three pole circuit breakers that would be up here. And then these are called one phase three wire branches coming off. And if you notice, like I said, AB, and then we have our BC wiring, BA, and then AB. So before we go into this next part, because what we're going to be talking about is looking at grounding lights. All right. Does everyone have somewhat of an understanding of what we're talking about as far as that we're still ungrounded and we're not trying to find our neutral like we were with residential wiring? Can you explain the pattern of uh, A, B, and B, C lines again? Uh, right here on this page? Ooh. Or the next page before it? Do you want understanding on this or the, the page before? Like here. Uh, page after. Page after, okay. So like I said, we have basically, <clears throat> whoa, starting to go a little crazy. We don't have a neutral here, like our residential. All right, we're utilizing three live wires. But instead of having a neutral where we're finding it, we're utilizing two circuit breakers instead of one, which is what we used to have in residential ship, uh, residential, where it come out of our two poles, we had a breaker right here, and we had our neutral. This is utilizing two circuit breakers with two live wires coming in to go to our stateroom. All right, and this is for our lighting. This isn't for this isn't for just like everything in the world is going to be coming off of this going to that stateroom. This is just our lighting bright, uh, panel. All right. And with that, as we go deeper in, we'll get a better understanding as we continue of how this works. Is when we go through our lighting circuit any sort of grounding that we talk about. All right, now, has everybody been in the TSCS, has everyone been in the engine room and seen both turbo generators? All right, people have went over to you and went like, that's the turbo generator, right? And then they pointed in front of you and you saw our, basically the main switchboard that we have right there. Okay, so on those main switchboards, they have something called a grounding light or our ground indicating lamps, all right? they are three light bulbs in a circuit like that, and then they usually have a push button. All right. Now these light bulbs are representing <clears throat> if we have a ground on any of our live wires. So this would be our A, B, and C. All right, they usually stay lit. They are evenly lit, all right? And I'm gonna post a video that's from the Amoeba School of Engineering that will actually bring it through 
and seeing these through an actual experiment that you would um, you could physically see them lighting up or not lighting. All right, as we go through with this, so please watch that video. All right, now we basically have what we're looking at here is we have our A, C, and B. All right, 450 volts between each phase, between A to C, C to B, and B to A. All right, 450 volts. Now, right now, line A has a ground to it. And that's not good. That could be a ground, this could be a motor, and one of the ground, one of the motor coils could have a ground and it could be shutting a huge problem throughout the entire system. All right, so you wanna search for these grounds. It's not gonna be like, it's not gonna trip off your motor problem, but if you get more than one ground, that's when you have an issue. And you don't plan for these grounds. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna have a ground on A for this week and next week you're gonna have a ground for B. All right, they just happen. So when we look at the ground for A, we're gonna know by these ground indicating lamps. All right, so we have power coming from each line voltage. So A, B, and C all have their own feed. All right, they are feeding the lights and each side of them are all connected together And then this is the only spot on the ship where you physically ground anything. All right, this is actually tethered to the ship. All right, and that's so that way we can find grounds. And the way it's happening is, is that we have power coming out of this spot right here the same power that's coming out of A, all right? It's going to a ground, but that ground is the same ground as over here. <clears throat> so in reality, what's happening is, is this line, this A line right here, is connected to the other side of this A line. And if you're having the same power coming in on both sides, this light bulb isn't gonna light because it's the same thing on both sides. There's no potential difference, so there's nothing pushing that electricity through. So you have an unlit light bulb. But what also happens is because this line, this ground right here is tethered to all three of these light bulbs, these other two light bulbs right here and here are gonna grow brighter. And they're gonna grow brighter, brighter because line A is connected to all three of them. And now you're having power coming in from both angles. So now you have way more power going into the light bulbs so they're gonna grow, they're gonna glow brighter. <laughs> there we go, all right. So let's erase this on the slide. So if we get rid of that ground, we can see all three of them are glowing evenly. All right, the same magnitude. But if we add a ground at B, we now have that light bulb is gonna go out. These two are gonna grow brighter, again, because they're getting more voltage going to them. And the same thing with C. So this is another switch. This is a new drawing that we have here as well. And this is what is called the normally closed button. All right, power's coming above, the wire's coming above it. All right, this piece right here that I'm drawing thick is the area where if it was a button, it was the spot where you're gonna be pushing with your finger. 
All right. So looking at that, what type of, if this is where you push down with your finger, what type of button is this? Is it normally open or is it normally closed? Normally open. Normally what? I'm sorry. Normally open. Why would we say normally open as opposed to normally close? So if you look at the button, guys, you see how we have to apply pressure down and how the metal prongs move away from the two wires? It's because there's going to be a spring action involved, so it's going to be normally closed. There's going to be constant flow flowing through. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, but I heard normally open and I got confused. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks. So... This button is normally closed. Because as soon as, like we said, we apply pressure, this button is gonna open up, all right? So as soon as we open this button up down here, what, what are we doing? When we open this, light, this button up, one, we're checking to see if any of these light bulbs are out because light bulbs just break. As we all know, we change light bulbs. So we're checking to see if these light bulbs break, but why would this light right here, which the blue wire has a ground to it, why would this relight if we remove this ground over here? All right, so why, why removing the ground on this side? We open up that circuit with this light bulb that has a ground on this side. Why would this relight? You're creating a potential difference across it because there's going to be current flowing in from the other two bulbs still. So, yeah, so these two still have their current, right? They're gonna grow brighter because they're getting backfed by our blue wire, our C wire. But as soon as we open this up, this light bulb is going to relight. Because instead of having this same potential difference, because it's still the blue wire, backfeeding and creating no potential difference. We open up this circuit right here. Now this will relight. And this is testing to see if these bulbs, if any of them are broken, it will relight due to that. All right. So as we talked about, this is where you have an issue. One ground isn't really a problem, but it's when you have two grounds. All right. Someone has a question? So if you have two grounds, you have a ground on C and you have a ground on B, now that ground is connected. Remember, just because there are two different points in the system that have a ground to it. This, what I drew right here with two grounds, might as well be just this. All right, it might as well just be a wire connecting both of them. And that's when you have a problem. 
All right, because instead of having two 120 volt systems, you now have a 240 volt coming in between these two. All right, and that will pop these breakers. So like I said, I have two videos that I have posted to Blackboard, probably about one o'clock I'll have them posted after the other class. All right, that whole lighting of the ground indicating lights is gonna be physically done on a board in front of you. So that way it's not gonna be just in the PowerPoint. All right, um, he will go over what we were looking at right there was called a Y. W, Y, E, and it's the way the three wires are connected. And I'll talk about a delta. That's not important for you guys right now. All right, but just concentrate that that's two different ways that you can wire up something. All right. Now, if you guys are confused on this, like I said, come to my office hours, rewatch the video, look at the videos that I'm gonna post, all right. Like you said, you guys did really well in today's quiz. I'm really happy with that. Um, if there's any questions, like you said, come to the office hours, all right? And the other thing that I'm gonna ask you guys to do too, if you guys have any emails that you're sending to me, please include that you either are 540 section, just say 540 TAC one or 540 10 a.m., all right? So that way, if we're looking at anything, I don't have to go searching through both classes uh, to go find whatever information I need for you. All right, other than that, that's today's class. We'll pick up basically from 35 next, 34 next week. So from quite uh, slide 15, actually 16. So from 16 to 33 is gonna be on Monday's quiz. All right, 16 to 33. Other than that, that's you guys. So that's quiz three. I'll see you guys Monday. If you have any questions, come to my office hours on Thursday. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Have a good one. Have a good day. Enjoy dynamics. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh. Professor, you saw that I kept cutting in and Yeah, I sorry, I kept letting you back in. You're good. You took today's quiz, right? Good, good, good. Everybody else good? All good. Okay.